the Harris Waltz campaign kicked off what they are calling uh, the Onboard the Reproductive Freedom Bus Tour. Most of us really know that it's a bus tour of death as they're just promoting abortion. But they started the tour yesterday uh, in hopes in Florida, but they're hoping to make 50 stops all across the nation. And that in addition to the new Democrat ads that are coming out in New York, California, Nevada, they are making it abundantly clear, if it were not already abundantly clear, that the issue of abortion will be the spotlight for them as we head towards November. At the same time, Democrats are accusing Republicans of being extremists. Republicans have the dangerous agenda, that at least according to the Democrats, but as we've been pointing out, it's the Democrats who are extreme. They literally are wanting taxpayer-funded abortion on demand for any reason up until birth in all 50 states. Well, my next guest says that abortion advocacy is not only extreme, it's also racist. Well, joining me now to discuss this is Pastor John Amanchukwu. He is one of the pastors at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ in Raleigh, North Carolina a powerful speaker. He and I were at an event together <clears throat> at Sea Island, Georgia, a couple of months ago. My first opportunity to hear him in person, and it was phenomenal. He's also the author of the book Erased, Uncovering the Lies of Critical Race Theory and Abortion. Pastor John, welcome to Washington Watch. It's an honor to have you, my friend. Hey, thank you so much for having me on. It's good to see you again. It is likewise. Great to see you. All right, listen, before we jump into the racism aspect of all of this, which you're, uh, nobody is able to unfold that like you. But before we get into that aspect of it, what's your take on the Waltz Harris bus tour that I just referenced is, uh, you know, Democrats are coming out with what I prefer to call a, a bus tour of death. Truly it is to have that um, set up at the DNC and now uh, transversing the country really says something about the Democrat Party that me and you already know, that it's a party of death. Uh, Margaret Sanger wanted to exterminate the Negro population. There's a letter uh, that she wrote um, to Dr. Clarence C.J. Gamble. And in that letter, she says she did not want the word to get out that she wanted to exterminate the Negro, Negro population and that she would use the black charismatic preacher to convince other blacks to abort their babies. What we're seeing right now with the Harris and Walt campaign, they're only furthering the plan and the strategy of Margaret Sanger. If you are pro-abortion, you're also pro-racism. And it's time for Americans to really understand what that truly says about a political party who seeks to do that. Margaret Sanger was the darling of the KKK. They brought her into their functions and allowed her to speak on multiple occasions. And today, Tim Waltz and Kamala Harris, a fake black woman, wants to say that they support them. And blacks are supposed to go along with that for the sake of identity politics, because I'm a black man, I should vote for someone who looks like me regardless of the fact that they want to kill as many black babies as possible. 20 million black babies are missing since the inception of Roe v. Wade. And we are supposed to support the Democrat Party. For any Christian who casts the vote for the Democrat Party, they're not doing that based upon the Bible. They're doing that based upon secular humanism and postmodernism and a new Christ, and a new Bible, and a new doctrine of the faith, not based upon Christ Christian principles. So how did this happen, Pastor? How, how does someone like Margaret Sanger come into the uh, picture like she did with the motive that you just described she had to eliminate the, the Negro race, as you described it? How does she do that? And then at the same time, use black pastors to push that message forward. It, it just seems so puzzling to me to figure out how all this came together. I have to say it, um, bear with me. 
White liberals have always sought to destroy blacks and to keep us bound in slavery. You know, it was the Democrat Party that, that, that did not want to end slavery. It was the Democrat Party that drafted the Jim Crow laws. It was the Democrat Party that voted against the Civil Rights Act. With, the, with strong support from the Democrat Party, they pushed the ideologies of Roe versus Wade. With the strong support of the Democrat Party, Planned Parenthood receives nearly 500 to $600 million a year in federal funding. And now with the support of the Democrat Party, a black woman, supposedly, Kamala Harris, we're being told to support the Democrat Party, a party that wants to kill babies all the way up to nine months. Now, one has to ask yourself, why are so many blacks gullible? Why are they supporting a political party that seeks to destroy them? Well, it's very complicated, but you have to go back to the, to the time frame of Lyndon B. Johnson. Uh, Lyndon B. Johnson came up with a great society plan. He found a creative way to remove the black man from the home and to replace him with a $300 to $400 check. He created welfare states and incentivized the single parent family. And from there, it broke the back of the black community as it relates to our marriage rates. From the 1890s all the way up to the 1950s, the black marriage rate rivaled that of whites. But when Lyndon B. Johnson came along with his Great Society plan, he obliterated the black community. Kamala Harris can care less about black Americans. She solely cares about criminal illegal aliens. So the criminal illegal aliens get jobs, but blacks get welfare. The criminal illegal aliens are told to come into our country and we'll give your children asylum. Blacks are being told, and Americans across the board are being told, to abort your baby. And now we have buses going around the country in the name of protecting the Democrat democracy. Someone has to die. Some baby must have their limbs ripped from their body. Some baby must have their skull crushed. This is insane and barbaric. We don't want to support a political party nor should we, that seeks to do these things. And if they can't kill the baby in the womb, I know from a firsthand account that they want to indoctrinate children in the public school system. So if you can't kill them in the womb, turn them into transgenders in the classroom. Push gender theory and queer theory upon them. Confuse them. And we know that God is not the author of confusion. We know that Satan is. Satan is the author of confusion. He's also the, the, the deceiver of the brethren. And so the Democrat Party offers nothing to America. But so many people have been duped and hoodwinked. And this is why now more than ever, the church must use her voice and speak up. Pastors who are on the fence, on the fence and playing these soft, uh, weak games of, you know, we can't talk about politics or... You know, the pastor must stay in his particular role. And, you know, the Bible is not political. All of these lies, you know, there are many preachers today who instead of telling their congregation to vote biblical values, they will much rather say nothing and be liberal and progressive. The Bible Absolutely. is political. Absolutely. It, it addresses all these issues that you're speaking of. Why, why do you think... Pastor John, that there seems to be a great willingness to speak out against deadly encounters with police, which there should be. I'm not saying I'm not trying to sweep that under the rug where it's unjust. It's unjust. Sure. But there seems to be a much greater willingness to speak out against that, but not against 20 million black babies that have been killed. Why is that? Well, you know, when you are a race baiter, I'm talking about men like Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton. You know, it pays the bills to be a race hustler and to divide people through Marxist, Marxist tactics, you know, 
And within Marxism, you must know how it works. There must be chaos. There must be division. There must be blacks versus white, the rich versus the poor, the patriarchy versus the matriarchy, the LGBTQIA plus community versus those who are straight. Marxism thrives through division. But there are individuals out there, you're right, who would much rather talk about uh, the, the white cop who kills a person, regardless of what they're doing or not, or whether or not it was deserved, you know, they would much rather talk about that than the 20 million black babies that, that, that have been killed in this country. It's intentional. You know, they, they sweep these things under the rug because it doesn't fit the narrative. And the moment some isolated incident shows up, they say, aha, we got you now. America is a racist nation and it's time to burn down neighborhoods and, and, and communities. And so these things are strategies. They are strategies. And listen, the left is waiting for the next opportunity for that to take place so that they can rip our country apart. I say to everyone out there that we need to listen, listen with the mind of Christ, right? We must use the, the fruit of the spirit to listen, to understand rightly what is going on and be discerning because so many today are being tripped up off of trivial things as a means of pulling someone to their political party. Absolutely. All right, so if I can, Pastor, let me switch gears with you just a little bit. Same, same general topic, but a different angle of it. There's, there, there's, I guess, several areas, but another glaring one where Democrats claim to be backing the black community, but they're not. And that's when it comes to uh, wages, and particularly lower wages. How has the Biden-Harris administration, uh, particularly the border policy, impacted lower wage earners? It has uh, impacted it sub substantially. You know, keep in mind over 10 plus million cr criminal illegal aliens have come into our country. Now, I don't call them newcomers or asylum seekers. Many of these individuals are military age. And oftentimes they find a way into the country and they leave their children and their families behind. And so, yes, they have taken jobs from blacks. This is true. You know, America only has but so many resources. You know, and when you come into economically disadvantaged communities and these individuals are, are giving thousands of dollars to purchase homes and to um, have different handouts from the federal government, these things will impact other economically disadvantaged people in those communities. But I think there is a strategy here. You know, how does the Democrat Party find a new Negro? <laughs> right. How do they find a new voting block. Well, it's called cheap votes. And that's why the leftists don't want to shut the border, because they have the opportunity to bring in a mass of people who will support their political party. And so that's what's taking place. And yes, it has uh, hurt black Americans. And keep in mind, black Americans are aware now. You know, in 2020, uh, President Trump received nearly 9 percent of the black vote. In 2024, he's trending around 24 percent. That is astronomical. That's huge. Yeah, That's major. It is. And I'm doing everything within my power to make sure that we move that trend in the right direction, not simply and solely for the sake of President Trump, but for the fact that we don't want to support a political party that wants to abort children. All right, let's end there. We've only got we've only got about 60 seconds left here. What do you say to black pastors, black leaders, black voters right now as we enter into this election cycle? 60 seconds. Number one, the blood will be on your hands if you fail to preach the whole counsel of the word of God. If you fail to point out the error of these current administrations, uh, God is going to judge you for that. You know, every man shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ to give an answer of what he's done in his body. And whether it be good or bad, the Apostle Paul says we persuade men. You know, we we persuade men knowing that this danger is coming. And so it's imperative now more than ever that pastors tell their congregations to vote biblical values, not based upon personalities, right. but biblical values. And no, 
Jesus is not on the ballot, but he's going to hold us accountable of how we vote. Absolutely, he will. Pastor John Amenchukwu, always great to see you. Thank you so much for your leadership on this. And may God bless your voice uh, to just be amplified across this country. Thank you for joining us today on Washington Watch. Thank you kindly. God bless you.